Welcome to this new video. In this video I want to talk about the Sony WH-1000XM uh, Freeze that I got together with my Xperia 1 Mark II that I'm using now for filming. And you know it's a bit darker, I want to try out if the Xperia 1 Mark II is good for filming. I think it will be as good as the Xperia 5 Mark II in terms of filming because it has basically the same camera setup. But you can be the judge and write down in the comment section what you think about the Xperia uh, 1 Mark II's recording right now. I have a ring light, so because it's a bit darker, uh, to light up stuff. So, the star of the show is the uh, Sony uh, WH-1000XM Freeze that I want to try out. And uh, I tested this for a few days already and uh, came to some yeah, conclusions and I want to present this uh, today now with you. So let's get started. So the XM Freeze come with this uh, pouch here and uh, this pouch has also a nice uh, graphic that shows you how it is laid down and it comes with a cable and a mono adapter as well. You can see my unboxing if you want to see more about this. So I like this pouch. I like the way that you can like uh, adapt them like this and put them somewhere. It's very, very short and uh, good. Uh, when you want to put them on, you have uh, left and right uh, marked here. So there is a left and there is a right as well. And you can just put them on your ears then. And if I put them on my ears already without turning them on, I hear myself a little bit dampened already. So uh, they're good in terms of iso isolation already without uh, having like any noise con uh, cancellation on. Another thing that we can see here on the ear cup is that uh, the, uh, what is it, the right ear cup has basically nothing besides the USB Type-C port that allows you to charge the device, which I think usually it's about 30 hours that uh, it will... I did not manage in one week to get it down uh, out of power yet. Then on the other ear cup, the left one, you have all the main controls. So the on-off switch, the noise cancellation switch, and the headphone jack that you can plug in if you want to. Here's the headphone jack actually that you can use for plugging it into devices that don't support Bluetooth. So this is pretty nice and pretty handy. And I put it on already and it's from the comfort level. It is very, very comfortable. I don't have to, if I have to change, I can change stuff here on the fly without any issues, but it's like very, very comfortable. Uh, no pressure at all uh, that is like a little bit ugly or too too harsh or something like this or too hard in, in general on, on the head or something like this. No, it is perfect. It fits perfectly on my head and you can see it here um, covering my ears wonderfully. No issues at all. Uh, although it is a bit small and if you have bigger ears maybe uh, you might touch here on the plastic which might be a bit awkward. Interesting enough, they uh, thought about uh, adding a bit of like air here in this in this squishy area. So there's a little bit of uh, dampening as well. Um, and this is also, I think, is pretty good for for a headphone in terms of uh, comfort. Comfort wise, I don't see much of a big problem. And and ear wise, maybe a little bit bigger cups. My it's, it's okay for me, but for others, I could imagine it could be a bit problematic. Um, they're not squeezing or squeaking or something like this and uh, I think this is also pretty good as you can see here. Uh, so yeah, no issues with that uh, in terms of uh, yeah using them like this. One of the biggest issues that I have and one of the biggest gripes are the touch areas here. Because usually when you have them on and let's say uh, someone wants to talk to me, what I can do, it's a nice feature, I can just feature, I can hold like this wait for half a second or something like this for it to go into ambient voice boosting mode where I can hear the voice. So it takes a little while to switch even with the newest firmware. And if I let go, it goes back to the previous mode that I had. Pretty nice, pretty good, but it's not very, yeah, uh, usable, I would say. So usually I don't do this because if I have my hands full and someone's talking to me, it's easier to do this. And uh, I think I grabbed my microphone. You might have heard it. But anyway, it's easier to do this and uh, it's also comfortable to wear like this, even though I'm blocking my microphone right now. But it, believe me, it's very comfortable as well. 
Uh, the only issue that in Gripe that I have is if someone's talking to me, I'm listening to a podcast or listening to some YouTube videos and I just stop it by double pressing here, double tap tapping. This does not always work. So you have to double press a few times until you hear a signal that uh, notifies you and s tells you basically, okay, your command has been processed and I'm now stopping basically. And then when you take them off, you accidentally sometimes touch this touch area and this is super sensitive so i had it a few times i thought i'm taking it off just lay it down there on the sofa or something like this and it was playing another song because i it registered a swipe because with a swipe you can go to the next one with a swipe you can go back and uh, or it changes the volume which is also up and down so it would be nice, and I think with the XM4s they did it already, that they added some sensors inside here of the ear cups. So if you take them off, it will automatically pause the system. And I hope that the swipes are not working. It would be very nice if uh, something like this would be happen, uh, happening here as well. Or if there would be an option that uh, says, as soon as I pause, um, then I don't want to have the skip uh, swipes uh, enabled, only if I'm playing back or something like this. It, I know it is solvable somehow and Sony already updated the, the firmware of those. Maybe they find a solution for this as well. Um, or they, it would be also nice to say, okay, I'm just pressing and holding the button for a few seconds for, for locking the controls or something like this, or making it not so sensitive in this case. Um, yeah, that's uh, the only gripe that I have with uh, wearing them. In terms of uh, sound quality, I think they are a little bit bass heavy. When I compare them to my Sennheiser PC uh, PXC 550s, um, but they're not bad. And I think sound isolation is better than on my Sennheisers, uh, which is pretty nice. And uh, I can show you the app, I think, to show you all of the features. I have to show you the app to show you all of the features. From the sound uh, perspective, I'm very pleased with the sound. I like the Sony sound in general. This is why I also have my MDR1As that have a very big sound stage. I really, really like that. Those don't have this big sound stage, but for a Bluetooth headset, I think it is pretty good. Even in 2021, the XM3s, if you can get them, a uh, pretty nice sound. I, I, I heard the XM4s and I'm hearing now the XM3s for a little bit longer. I don't see much of a difference, I have to say. The drivers are a bit bigger here. The I think the battery time is a bit better on the XM4s because you have smaller drivers. Uh, but in general, I'm very, very pleased with the sound of the XM3s. And uh, yeah, I will turn it on now, connect it via Bluetooth to my Xperia 1 Mark II that I'm recording right now. And I will show you how the user interface uh, in the Sony headphones app looks like. So now we have my Xperia 1 Mark II here. I will unlock it and uh, we'll go to the desktop and I have my uh, WH. 1000XM freeze here, so we'll turn them on right now. By the way, I'm recording with the Xperia 5 Mark II. So it says power on, it's also speaking to you. And you can see it is connecting directly to my uh, device. Here you can see that the XM freeze are connected already. So what I have here is I can see the battery percentage. I can say, okay, connect for phone calls and media on audio. And I have the option to enable LDAC support, which is like the high-end uh, codec for Bluetooth uh, and wireless playback quality I can set up here. Best effort is the one that I would recommend. With sound quality preferred, you have to be just like in cable distance from your phone. Otherwise, it will have some disturbances in the force, no, the disturbances in the audio quality. So you can hear some uh, slight lags or delays. Yeah, this is what I have here. There's another app also available called the Sony Headphones app. And with this app, you have the ability to change certain aspects of your uh, WH-1000XM3s. First of all, you have adaptive sound control. And I don't know who invented this, but it is not working for me. Adaptive sound control means depending on who, nee, depending on where you are, maybe also who you are, no, uh, depending on where you are, it will change the noise cancellation mode. So it can also go into like um, the voice assistant mode where you can hear voices clearly. It can turn the 
uh, noise cancellation off, especially in your, if you are in your bedroom, quiet environment, for example. And it has, if I turn it on here, detection of actions, and it's detecting now the action. And I can also uh, set it up here, so you can see there are different profiles in here, sitting in a quiet um, environment, for example. And I can regulate noise cancellation, uh, walking on a street, uh, uh, running, and then transport. So if I'm in uh, commuting through my area, then I want perhaps the um, the control on. And every time you hear, maybe maybe you're not, you hear sound. You can turn on this, uh, turn off this sound here, a notification tone when switching. But what I had more often, especially in the training phase, was that it turned itself uh, on or switched for some odd reason because I just went down to throw away the garbage and uh, yeah, music stops. So this is why I don't like this adaptive sound control. If I want to switch, I switch manually. So this is why I recommend you to turn it off. But if you like to have it automatically done for you, then you can do it. Of course, you can turn it on then and configure maybe the way you like it. Under sound, we have some nice um, com, um, options here. By default, ambient sound control is on, but we can turn it off here. And we have also the option to regulate the noise cancellation in various different uh, options. And here you can see there's a nice graphic showing you uh, how much of ambient sound has been let through. And you have also the focus on voice mode where you can hear voices better, especially if someone uh, wants to talk to you. Uh, this is pretty nicely done here as well. And you, it sounds a bit artificial, but it is still not bad. Then you have a noise cancellation optimizer that you can start personal optimizing. It's not optimized right now, but I could start it here right now. Atmospheric pressure optimizing is already done. So you don't have this pressure feeling on your ear. Very, very good as I think. And uh, then sound position control is also interesting so where I can uh, choose where my sound position should be. By default, it's this one, but I also can change it to a different one if I like to hear. And I must change the sound quality mode though if I want to use this. So this is the sound positioning control. Um, honestly, I don't really want to play with this, but if you're a musician and you want to hear the sound from a specific direction or angle, uh, or you have a hearing problem and you need to hear it from a specific angle to hear better, then you can change it here. Then we come to surround sound. You can turn this off and on. I personally don't like it at all. So, but oh, you have the option to, it's off right now. You can, of course, you have to change the sound quality mode again, which means change from LDAC to uh, aptX HD, I think it is, or AAC or something like this but you have concert hall, arena, and some others here. You have an equalizer that you can turn on and off, and here you have also changed the sound quality again. Um, you have bright, custom, you can change the equalizer the way you want to. Very nicely done, Sony. I like this because this not only saves it on my phone, it saves it in the headphones itself. So if I connect it even to some other device that doesn't have the Sony app, I have still my preferred equalizer settings in here. Very, very nicely done, especially also I think for the iPhone where there's no Sony app. So this is the Android app here. Then I have a 360 reality audio setup. This is only for special audio cases. So if you use Tidal or some other services that support 360 reality audio, which is a yeah, brand name for a special audio option, then you can set this up here the way you like to. And then there's a sound quality mode, priority on sound quality. I can change it to a stable connection if I want to. If I have issues with the connection, this is necessary. Otherwise, prioritize the sound quality and you get the best sound quality out of your headphones. And then DSE EHX, I turn it on to auto. If you have difficulties, just like for example, uh, on the Xperia 10 Mark II, I had difficulties with this option uh, for plugged in headphones. So if you have difficulties in with one or the other app, just turn them off and uh, yeah, you don't have the issue anymore. Then we have some system settings here as well. Just like for example, I can say I want to change the buttons, like to change the function of the NC ambient button. And I can change here ambient sound control, Google Assistant calling or Amazon Alexa calling. So it will just simply um, call those applications. Touch sensor control panel, I can enable or disable it. And I can turn, of course, my um, headphones off after a specific time, five minutes, for example, or do not turn off at all. 
and notification voice guys I can turn them on or off and I have even the option to change the language by default it's English but I can change it to various different languages as you can see here so if you want to have your assistant talking to you if you turn it on or off in, in German for example you can do this here without any issue there is more to this app if you click here on the three dots button you can click on the version which, you, which gives you the version of your headphones the firmware version especially and you have some information here which gives you information about new firmware updates for your xm3s just like for example 30th of december uh, september of 2020 we got an update oh these are the wrong ones uh, here version 7.3 update and stuff that has been changed here very nicely done as well and you have also some tips where you can uh, have usage tips in here right now there's nothing in there someone can write in the comment section if you uh, received some tips and then which is very very nice especially if you want to switch your phone or something like this or just want to back up your setup with all the equalizer settings and so on you can back up and uh, restore these you can click in here and you can say okay adaptive sound control i can back up so if you've learned already your adaptive sound control and you have to buy new ones or something like this you can back this up to the cloud i'm not sure but i think this can also be restored to newer versions of the xm3 so xm uh, xm lineup so the xm4 for example could uh, also restore this probably so this is possible a very nice interesting um, setup that you have the option to save this and yeah this is basically everything for the application and everything for this video if you have some questions you can ask down there in the comment section that's everything for this video and uh, hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time bye